Thank you, we Your are... Excellency. That's very kind. <laughs> well, I've seen you in action multiple times, so it's it is a delight to have you here this evening. Um, Your Excellency, did you have? I would agree. If the world's burning down, I want Desja by my side. So uh, well, excellent. Thank you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Even if I started it burning down, does that I change your you know, opinion I've at all? Never seen you set a fire. Not in SCA standards, but you know. <laughs> She's usually there with a the pot of water, digging the <laughs> trenches around the fire. <laughs> Why are you carrying around that water? In case. <laughs> in case. So with that uh, hmm, soggy introduction, we'll go ahead and have you introduce yourself officially and uh, move on into the uh, into the meat of the class. Okay, thank you, Your Excellencies. Um, as they mentioned, I am Viscountess Nadezhda Volinskaya. Uh, I am been asked to teach a class we're calling in case of rain, R-E-I-G-N. Um, uh, it's uh, hopefully entertaining. Um, I have the PowerPoint and I have stuck with the idea of PowerPoints in that I don't have 18,000 words on a page. So if this, <laughs> if this uh, goes out as a handout, uh, you'll need to take notes as to what each bullet is. So anyway, I'm going to now ruin the effect of my beautiful garb that I did not make with glasses. So I can read. All right. Let's see. This worked once. Let's see if it'll work again. There we go. Hopefully all y'all can see my screen. Uh, the reason I am teaching this class, or at least I believe I could teach this class, is I've been princess twice. And the first time we won and stepped up technically the same day, um, even though it was a little after midnight. Um, I, I have also served as uh, head of retinue, both at principality and kingdom level. Uh, and I didn't put it on here, but I've also been seneschal at almost all levels. So I understand legalities or at least what the society wants um, out of things to keep it legal. We are here to get a better understanding of what a combatant and a consort should be expecting if they're successful in their quest to win a coronet or a crown tournament. Um, I don't, I, I assume that a lot of people do think about it before they actually entered the field or entered the lists, uh, but you'd be surprised. Um, and I'm going to, I have structured this so that we're gonna talk in general about everything. And then I will address at the very end, uh, what happens if in fact we go into a uh, coro vestiture or a, uh, uh, I can't even remember, I think we called it a crownation at one point, wherein you would win and step up the same day or the next day. Uh, just some bullet points around useful, useful things. So, uh, oh, also, um, please post questions in your chat and I will be answering them at the end, if it's a burning question, you can unmute and just talk right over me. Uh, hopefully I will stop and uh, listen to your question and be able to give you a decent answer. I didn't get any questions beforehand, so maybe people just don't know what to ask, or I'm talking to a bunch of people who already know everything. So, uh, in which case, correct me if I'm wrong. Here we go. So, there are requirements actually to enter a crown or a coronet list. Uh, you need to read them so that you can see what it is you're actually signing up for. Uh, it's not as simple as you might think it is. Um, important things are uh, the governing documents of the society, corpora. Specifically section four has a section, has, uh, is a section about requirements of royalty what they need to do to be eligible to, to fight and be fought for, and also what they're expected to do and how they're expected to behave once they set uh, step up. And then what you need to do in order to be granted a title at the end of the uh, endeavor so that you can wear fancy headgear or, uh, you know, 
step up in the processional at other tournaments. Uh, also important is the Ontier Kingdom Law. Uh, I think out of all of it, the important point is you must swear fealty if you win at the coronet level, you must swear fealty to the crown for your lands. And I don't believe that they make an exception for service. So many times you can ask, you can ask people to swear an oath of service um, instead of fealty in case there are uh, issues with you swearing fealty. I don't know that, that, that there's a workaround for that um, if you are going to be uh, a territorial prince or princess or king and queen. I could be wrong about that. I've never had to look it up. So you also need to read and be familiar with uh, principality law, um, even if you just read it once so that if, if somebody asks you a question, you can say, wait, that sounds familiar. Let me go check with check it. Um, uh, we had a saying when I was in a shawl, we don't quote corpora or law or whatever, we read it. Because if you're trying to quote it, it's probably changed and you'll probably be wrong. So uh, read it, keep a copy with you at all times if you're of a uh, administrative bent. Now, funding. Your reign can be as expensive or as frugal as you want it to be. There are, uh, you know, coronets you can spend thousands of dollars as a crown, you can spend tens of thousands of dollars if you want to. Uh, I don't recommend that, but if that's how you roll, then that's cool. Um, there are funds for reimbursement for travel and possibly other things, uh, but that is uh, spelled out and limited. So your reign will not be funded by the kingdom or the principality completely. Um, if you want to be uh, grandiose, that's that's groovy, and maybe you can get a lot of people to pitch in and help and help to do help to do things. Also, fundraising is expected to re, expected from you to replace whatever monies you are reimbursed for from the travel fund in the principality. Um, I'm not certain at this moment if that is true for kingdom as well. Um, uh, I should have looked at that after I typed it. Um, <laughs> now all of those things, requirements, you know, what you, what you need to do, like you must be a member. Um, <laughs> this is awesome. My dog and cat are now going to play loudly in the background. It's fabulous. Uh, and how much money you're going to spend is important. Um, but you cannot do this by yourself. Uh, you need people. You need friends, possibly acquaintances, possibly strangers to sign up with you to help help run uh, the kingdom or the principality on the game side. You'd be surprised how much work it actually is. It is important that you pick competent and capable people that you trust for your lead positions. You want people that you can say, right, uh, Einar, you're gonna be the guard captain and I trust you to go be the guard captain and know what that entails and you'll just take care of it so that um, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I, when I when I reign, when I do uh, team uh, event stewarding, I pick people that I know will do the job and then just let them do it. And unless they go far out in the left field, uh, I know that it will be okay. Delegation is important, but you need to pick people you can delegate to who will not screw it up or who will also come back if they have a question and ask good questions. Uh, like I said, those could be your friends, they can be your really close friends, or they can be people you don't know really well, but have a good reputation. Um, or you can, you know, somebody you saw on a previous reign uh, that you liked apparently what they were doing, but you may not know them very well, and you can totally ask them. They can always say no. Uh, 
for them, the worst thing they could say would be yes, because then they'd actually have to do the job. Equally as important, know who you will not work with. Uh, and you need to communicate that to your head of retinue, your guard captain, and your team leads in general. There are people I will not work with because they have shown themselves in the past not to be competent and capable, and in fact, may uh, produce more drama than solution. So you need to think hard about that. Now that's different than people you don't maybe care for, but you could still be professional and work with them if they are in an officer position or something like that. But you should have, you, you should know ahead of time who, if you had to work with, would absolutely ruin it for you. Uh, part of this is having fun. <laughs> and if you're dealing with drama all the time from someone who that's all they do, but they don't really contribute any solutions, that's no fun. Uh, you can let, there's, there's a ton of other people who could do whatever job that might be. Um, this is kind of a fine point. So if there's any questions on this right now, I'd love to answer them. I do not see the chat, I'm sorry. So if you have a question, just unmute and ask away. Would you be willing to help out if I have a rain? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Uh, Eric, so this is Lizette. Uh, hi, Lizette. Hi, how are you tonight? Better now. Everything for like two seconds. Um, so is there any particular positions that you feel are more key for this particular item than others? Like, are, are there positions that you don't necessarily work with them as much? So if it's someone that the person you're reigning with really wants on the staff, but maybe you don't get along as well, you might put them in. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yes, I understand what you're asking. Perfect. Uh, yes, there are. Um, if hopefully your partner uh, understands your um, objection and is willing to not make them like your head of retinue, your chief of staff, right? The person that you interact with probably more than anyone else uh, because they are doing all the little stuff for you, right? If that is somebody that you can't work with, you are gonna have problems and it's not gonna be fun. I would say also, um, same thing goes for like, the next two level, like the guard captain and your principal attendant. I've got some, I've got some things listed out on the next couple of screens, but basically um, there are, and your maybe your scribe or your court coordinator. If you can't get along with your court coordinator, you're going to have issues. Uh, if, if, and again, it's, it's a level of, gosh, I really don't care for them, but I know they can do the job versus if we have that person in, all they're going to do is spend the time in front of the event making problems for us to try to solve at the event or even after the event. So, uh, but yeah, and, and we can talk more about that in a little bit when I have um, the positions uh, up on the screen. Thank you, Lizette. That's a good question. All right, I'll go ahead and move on. Um, if you think of a question around this, go ahead and hit up the chat and I'll look at it at the, at the end. Sorry, I can't see the chat right now. Infrastructure continued. So on the Ret News I've been on and ran, um, it turned out that there were staff, ladies in waiting, lords in waiting, guards, whatever, who somehow turned out to be decorative. <laughs> um, they were not expected to haul or put up tents or um, you know, run, attend their majesties or their, or their highnesses during an event, but instead would just kind of show up for court and be behind the thrones and things. And that's fine as long as you know that ahead of time. So something you should discuss with your um, uh, consort, either the fighter or the, the, the uh, uh, consort, sorry. Um, who, if anybody, is going to be decorative and who's going to be useful. I have an expectation that guards actually be useful. That doesn't necessarily follow all the time. <laughs> At the uh, crown level, 
often queen's guards are useful and the king's guards are decorative. And this is not, this is a broad generalization and I'm not, my intent is not to offend anybody because I'm sure I'm looking at some of the people on this list, you're all, you're hard workers, right? You're not decorative, but um, it is frustrating if you are or your staff are looking for help and you go to somebody who is on retinue and they look at you blankly when you ask them to work because their expectation is that they're just decorative. I would, I would concur with that as someone who has also worked Kingdom Retinue <laughs> extensively. Learning who is decorative and who is not is an important part of the process. Thank you for validating me. Uh, <laughs> It is, it's not the, it's not a cool thing to find out, um, you know, when you need something. I, I try when I do kingdom head guard, head lady training, whatever, to make sure that people understand the expectations from the outset. But yeah, it's definitely an interesting quandary to get into. Indeed, I agree. Ugh. <laughs> so having said that, um, I've listed out uh, a bunch of positions that um, I have seen. I'm sure there are opportunities for other positions. And uh, if if any of you have experience with positions that I that you don't see listed here, let me know. Um, I feel my feeling most important position is your head of retinue. They are going to be the person, as I mentioned earlier, you're interacting with most uh, at events and not at events you probably talk daily um, at events they're probably you know somebody you will talk to half of the time about making sure things are done or transmitting instructions so that they possibly can transmit them down um, if you've uh, hired for lack of a better word um, a good principal attendant and a good guard captain who know what they're supposed to be doing, uh, the head of retinue can be used to fight fires and solve problems as opposed to de dealing with all little details. Um, so head of retinue, very important to, to pick someone that you trust and that is capable of delegating well and then dealing with solutions or dealing with problems, solving them so that they don't go up that next level unless they really have to. Uh, I've called this principal attendant in the past. It's always been called head lady in waiting because we didn't have a lot of lords in waiting. That is changing. So I've seen uh, the phrase principal attendant um, used in other kingdoms. So I'm just introducing it to y'all, y'all. Uh, this person is in charge of finding people to attend their majesties or their highnesses during events. Um, during court or, want, or uh, walking through the event, going places, being in meetings, that sort of thing. Um, so you need, again, you need people you can trust, but who don't necessarily need to, to be doing things, but kind of just maybe standing around waiting, as the title says. Guard captain, um, sort of the same thing, but for guards. Uh, equal, equal need for guards during court and for hauling, setting up, pulling down, and that sort of thing. Uh, I think in the far past, the attendants were mostly people who identify as women and the guards were people who identify as men. Um, that is blurred now. So there's no expectation, there shouldn't be an expectation that guards would be men and attendants would be women and uh, never the lines shall cross. Uh, I expect as in my retinues that I've run that attendants and guards um, work. <laughs> It doesn't matter who you are, unless you have a disability or something, but we can work around that. Court coordinator um, would be the person or the people putting together 
your items of business for court, awards, uh, peerages, announcements, uh, installing officers, installing champions, figuring out the order of those things, uh, making sure that there are award necklaces and scrolls as appropriate to go with those items, and being able to communicate with the herald uh, how this is going to work, and with the uh, landed crowns or coronets who may step in and take a look at your list and say, nope, I want to switch that, and then you, the, the court coordinator makes sure that that happens okay. Uh, court coordinator should also be responsible for making sure that items of regalia not necessarily carried with the, the crowns or the coronets all the time um, are at court if they're needed. For example, if you have a peerage happening and someone wants to swear on the orb of dominion, as everyone should, um, and the orb of dominion is not at court, that's a problem. Um, it is, there are forms now, thankfully, that you fill out ahead of time, or that wranglers fill out ahead of time so that the crowns people or the cornets people know if they need, you know, these items ahead of time so they can make sure that they're there. But it's just, it, it, it is a responsibility <clears throat> um, of the court coordinator, as I see it. Excuse me. Um, Part my my apologies. Uh, some oops. Oh no. There we go. Uh, somebody else that is very important is a scribe. Uh, your scribe is in charge of delegating, ideally not doing them all themselves, but scrolls and charters to be filled in and be ready to, in case they are needed for handing out awards. Um, they are probably also going to be designing scrolls uh, along either themes, your persona, your period, whatever. So um, it's, a, it's a great community. I don't know much about it at all, except when I've asked, they've produced. So somebody's, um, somebody can <laughs> uh, look into that. And, and, and talk to scribes, and there are lots of competent, capable scribes out there who are also managers. The scribe themselves doesn't have to necessarily be an artist, but it helps, but they should be able to manage people. Um, I have managed to pull the chat up. Let's see, camp coordinator, that's a good one. Lizette, I will add that, I'm taking a note. Oh, and thank you, Your Excellency, your royal liaison. I did, yeah. I missed that. That's an important role as well. Thank you. Uh, I don't have that on the list anywhere, as you shall see when we go to the next page. Uh, fundraiser. Um, I am not a good fundraiser. I have friends who are, so I ask them to help fundraise. Um, you might be an excellent fundraiser, so this title has an asterisk by it because I, it could be optional, right? But you will need to raise funds if you use funds uh, to replace those funds uh, in principality or kingdom coffers. Oh, I got scribe on there twice. That's, they're that important. Um, grail bearer for the principality um, is an important position. Often people see it as ceremonial, but the idea behind the grail, grail bearer is that they are automatically granted the opportunity to speak their mind, theoretically, to the prince and princess. It provides the opportunity for a, an opinion or a perspective that the coronets may not have. So I, I think that's a very important um, position. Shoo, go lay down. Uh, herald, if um, you may want your own herald, to coordinate heralds at courts throughout your progress, as opposed to relying on one or two um, wherever you are. 
two people, uh, one person, whatever, will quickly ruin their throat if they are the only ones speaking uh, and projecting during a court, during many courts, on and on and on. So heralds, um, again, uh, there's an existing community to tap into. And all you, do, all you need to do is find one that can also delegate. And uh, that's a good thing, manage people. Clothier, um, I should have put an asterisk by that, but often uh, crowns are, and coronets have matching costumes. They have clothes to be made, garb to be made throughout the entire reign. And unless they're super people, there's, there's no time for that. So having someone who can handle all of that, who can, again, delegate pieces to be worked on out, get them back in a timely fashion, and then have them put together into garb that can be worn appropriately. And at the time that the crowns and uh, coronets expect to. A largest coordinator, more and more important. Um, uh, at events, we've all seen crowns and coronets call the autocrat or other significant people up into court and give them largesse. Um, it, I, hopefully, <laughs> we have moved beyond the days of going to Goodwill and finding interesting things at Goodwill for largesse. As the society moves more towards an authenticity push, um, it becomes more important. As, and, and it depends on the crown or coronet. But having very nice period things to give as gifts is honestly really cool. To be able to watch the people who receive them just go, ooh, wow, that was awesome. Um, and then be able to use them, right? Uh, is a very good thing. And again, that's something that I would think most people don't have time to do uh, in addition to, you know, running a kingdom. And I'm sure Lizette and other people can uh, chime in on that as well. So Rain Chamberlain is something that would be, that I've seen very rarely, but it would be a personal Chamberlain, if you will, to the crowns or the coronets to make sure that all the regalia that is taken to an event also comes back from an event. Um, we've had some pretty notable losses in the last few years of kingdom regalia. And so more and more, uh, there's a push for personal responsibility about these things. So. I, I feel that probably most coronets and crowns would want to do that on their own, but some there's a lot of regalia. So maybe having a person specifically tasked with making sure that that all goes out and comes back as appropriate is important. Um, quartermaster, also known as hauler of the trailer. When you win a kingdom or a principality, Cornet list or uh, list. There is a trailer. <laughs> uh, you need to be able to haul it yourself or have somebody again you trust uh, to haul it for you. Someone who is not going to be speeding down the road recklessly, leaving it, you know, uh, unhooked outside of a of a sherry's or something, um, so that it could be stolen. Uh, take, storing it appropriately so that it's hopefully not damaged by you know acts of god whatever um, if you yourself can haul a trailer then you're fine and you probably won't, won't need this um, the kingdom has both the kingdom trailer and a royalty trailer so it's uh kingdom has a quartermaster it's it's a position it's an office um, but i don't believe the principality does I think um, it would be somebody who would need to be able to travel to all the of all the events on your progress. Oh, look at that, a segue right into progress. So things you need to think about around reigning. What events are you required to attend? Uh, at both the crown and principality levels, there are events 
you are required to attend. You need to figure out what those are. Then you figure out what events you should attend. And then what events do you want to attend, you know, to like have fun. And uh, you need to resolve those conflicts. Uh, a thing to remember is that the crown or coronet is two people. The, you can split up responsibilities and um, double your presence, if you will. Think of, keep that in mind when you're figuring out uh, which events you're going to go to. Uh, keep in mind also that travel is, is going to happen with all those. Travel means money um, and so on and so on. Not just time, but then food and blah, blah, blah. So you'll need to resolve those conflicts and figure out what you're going to go to and what you're not going to go to. But you will be flooded the instant you win with invitations to every event. Uh, so you need to, to figure out what your priorities are before you have to make a decision suddenly. And you need to be able to say when somebody comes up to you to invite you to an event, like, oh, thank you. All right, uh, we're still working out our progress. So we'll keep this in mind. I didn't really list out like the ethereal uh, part of being a crown or a coronet. You know, do you have an agenda? What is your purpose? Uh, what are you going to change while you're on the throne? Uh, that's really been covered, I think, a lot of other places. Uh, and the practical part has been overlooked. So that's why I'm focusing on the practical part. Now, here we go to in this in this time of pandemic, um, we may have crowns that are, are crown tournaments that yield heirs that step up that night or the next day. Same with principality tournaments. Um, I they're still working out how they're going to work that out. It depends when we're allowed to have events again. So it is possible that you will. Uh, when and then step up immediately, uh, immediately being in a period of time of two to 10 hours, that sort of thing. So it's okay if you're going to enter the tournament to take a nice outfit with you. It's not being presumptive, presumptuous. Um, it's being realistic. Hopefully you're entering to win. You could win. And gosh, wouldn't it be nice to be invested um, wearing something other than your scrubby clothes. Um, think about who you need if you win and step up the same day. It'd be nice to have somebody, even if it's temporary, to act as your head of retinue. Uh, somebody to be, at least in the principality, a grail bearer. Uh, you will have at least one court. <laughs> And if you can't haul the trailer yourself to uh, somebody who can haul the trailer, your head of retinue for that day or the next day or two, you know, depending on the length of the event, really should just be able to find some attendants, find some guards, um, be able to coordinate time with uh, the kingdom or principality exchequer or chamberlain because you'll need to inventory the trailer and hand it all off, um, get the regalia, you sign out, sign it out, all that stuff. Um, but if you win and step up, you're not required to be hitting the ground running fully loaded the same day. You're not expected to have uh, a slew of charters ready so you can give out all sorts of awards um, you may do at your court, um, if there's a first court for you, routine transitions of officers, installation of any champions that may have done been uh, done that same weekend, uh, that sort of thing. Thanking the autocrats, whatever. Um, at least in my experience, you are not required to be fully armed and operational as soon as the crown or coronet hits your head. You get like a week and then you need to be. So, which is why it's important to think about all those positions uh, ahead of time, uh, what you do and do not want in that sort of uh, arena. So that when you have only a week to become fully armed and operational, 
uh, you can do it, or at least, you know, get 50 to 60% along the way, and then you just start rolling, and it will all be great. And I, and I love this picture I found. I don't know who this gentleman is, but I love huzzah on a cardboard, uh, piece of cardboard. So resources, if you are intending to enter a tournament that makes you responsible for lands in the society, you need to read the governing document of the SCA. Like I mentioned at the beginning, there are requirements for uh, and expectations for reigning landed people. Um, and a lot of that, some of that I should say, has to do with expected behavior, <laughs> which was interesting to read it recently. It has been revamped a couple of times more recently, so it's important to read. Also kingdom law, if you were going to be responsible for lands, in the kingdom, either the whole kingdom or part of the kingdom, you need to know what you're going to be expecting of other people, what you can and cannot do, how events run, that sort of thing, uh, as well as the principality as well. So uh, please uh, read these documents, go to these links, enjoy all the various documents that are there, um, but at least read them once. Um, they're pretty eye-opening if you haven't read them at all. So handily, uh, that is the end of my prepared commentary. I'm scrolling back through chat now. Uh, again, thank you, Your Excellency, for Royal Liaison. Uh, folks, uh, Royal Liaison would be the person who would be entrusted with communicating with other royals uh, during one's reign, um, especially as to coordinating for events that everyone's going to be at um, or at like crown event when you've possibly got other crowns coming in to watch. You want somebody to, to be able to set up the infrastructure for them because they won't have their normal infrastructure accessible to them. That is a really important, and I'm gonna put that on my list before we save this. Um, let's see, it looks like the fealty answer got question, question got answered. Uh, ooh, having a web manager, yes. Thank you, your grace. Um, the having a web manager is in fact more important now. Uh, I would, when I was head of retinue, we didn't have much interaction. I think I had access to the progress to be able to update the progress. Uh, but I've seen recently that it looks like more and more, uh, it would be nice to, to have a web manager. So that is awesome. And I will put that on the list as well. What if all your clothes are scrubby? Well, you need to win a tournament then because all of a sudden you will know, you will only have nice things made by other people, hopefully. Oh, excellency, good point. If you are a greater officer, especially uh, at the level of the coronet or the crown, if you're a kingdom officer, you really shouldn't be entering a crown tourney. If you were principality officer, you really shouldn't be entering a coronet tourney. Um, I say that knowing full well that I did just that uh, and had to find people to step in for me at the, at the principality level. And looking back now, I can see that that was not a cool thing to do to my friends. <laughs> so, um, it, and in fact, there was a board member who had just stepped up to the board and then won a crown tournament. And so then suddenly they were had to uh, deal with that. They were suddenly down a member. So thank you, Karen, that's a good point. Um, yes, the idea is that all of this is uh, being discussed between consorts and combatants before you get there, hopefully. Um, it shouldn't be a total surprise. Uh, you will be remembered, but maybe not fondly if uh, you go into it not knowing anything. 
<laughs> I, I would also recommend if you're, especially for Crown, having somebody who's going to ensure that you're fed. <laughs> yes. Camp and master. and that went to my point with camp coordinator, because some yes. part of the thing I've experienced being retinue for Royal Reigns is seeing several Royal Reigns where they had a camp coordinator whose job it was to make sure that when you got back to camp at the end of the night or in the middle of the day, you had food, your tents were set up, all of those sort of things so that that was one less stress or worry. But it is, again, one more position you need to fill. So there's always that balancing act. Ideally, the uh, your cook should be good. It's important. <laughs> I highly recommend His Excellency Clovis, should anybody be needing a uh, camp cook. Uh, it looked like Tessina had her hand up. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even see a hand up. Yes, Tessina. Hi, sorry. I'm used to school, so. I love it. Um, I have a couple questions in different categories. Do you want interpersonal or practical first? Let's go practical. Practical question. Um, it's specifically laws. Should you rewrite the laws if you cared to? But the secondary part of that, the more practical, what if they need updating? Real bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ron. Uh, well, then. I would think that um, if that I would hope that one's seneschal would be keeping on top of that. That doesn't always happen, as we know. Um, so I would say that you probably it, it's like with anything, any position where you are interacting with people or you're responsible with people, maybe don't land and immediately dig out the red pen and start striking out huge sections that you don't like. Um, there are a lot of part of the principality law and or kingdom law derivatively that way that are mandated by corpora. So you really can't change them and you just get us in trouble with you do. Um, but in general, I would think, you know, it, it is the prerogative of the crown or coronet to review the laws and suggest and, and, and edit them, but uh, maybe not um, randomly or with a specific purpose in mind that's gonna get whatever lands you're responsible for in trouble with at BOD. They, if they need to be updated, absolutely. And in fact, Kingdom just got done updating a huge update in the last two years, I believe. It's probably longer than that with the pandemic. I, you know, when you count everything as six months per, per crown, this has really screwed up my, my uh, abacus uh, so in the last three years, a major rewrite did occur. occur so, uh, but yeah, that should there should be ideally a rewrite if if it if it's needed. Your other half of the question, or was that uh, your interpersonal? That, that was uh, the interpersonal is. Um, I've only I, the most of these are based directly on watching all of my friends reign. Um, which that's actually a great question. Um, how do you interact? How do you navigate being friends with people and still reigning? By that, I mean, how do you not work your friends to death or completely ignore them because they're not important? Or because you just don't have time? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a fine balance. Uh, is one of the reasons I encourage uh, while your head of retinue may be your friends or you know, one or two of the chief principal, uh, the chief officers, if you will, your chief positions might be friends. They should be out looking for people who are not your friends, right? <laughs> They're not necessarily your friends for exactly that reason. For uh, recruiting at events you go to, to get locals involved, to train up other people uh, is very important, both to train them and get experience across the land, if you will, but also not to burn out your friends who, may not like you at the end of it. Um, and part of having fun when raining is making sure you carve out camp time where you're in camp, not doing anything else, but hanging out with your friends if you want to, or having a nap uh, or whatever. Um, it may or may not be possible, but 
you need to recharge when you're raining, um, however that works for you. So it is a fine line. Hopefully your friends understand. And maybe you just talk to some of your friends at the beginning and say, look, I'll see you in six months, eh? <laughs> uh, because you know that what you are about to do doesn't match what they enjoy doing at events or even not at events, right? So I think it's a little easier with uh, the advent of social media to keep in touch with people. But, you know, I think, I think we're all going to see when, once we get to events, it's all going to be a bunch of people sitting around campfires trying to catch up in the last year. So I think it'll be hard for everybody. Um, does that answer your question, oh my protege? Yes, plus this stuff I can ask you in person, like next time I see you, but. Yeah, well, we can do that. Yeah. Sure. It's beneficial cool. to Thank the rest you. of us to hear the answers though. True, that's why I asked them because the yes. friendship ones, I've, I've watched friends get worked to death and lose that friendship after the rain. Um, also with your SO, your, your SO is a person. Sorry, I was the girlfriend of the prince. Um, worst job ever, don't recommend. <clears throat> Indeed, um, my yeah, I, my first reign, uh, my prince. I was not his his significant other. His significant other had a very hard time with that whole thing. So you need to be comfortable with that. I think that goes back a lot to your point early on, uh, your grace. Is, are you viscountess or uh, you know? I honestly don't know what your title is. Viscountess. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I just had this moment where I was like. No, that's not. Uh, <laughs> Your Excellency, I'm not is, wearing the I'm not wearing the right hat, right? To tell you clearly, that's, so, true. that's true. I'm also not wearing my glasses because I'm doing up close detail work, picking at stitches. Um, the you you made a point early on about the importance of choosing people in those prime positions who are good at delegating, and that is one of the ways that I have seen friendships more easily maintained is that if you have people who are good at delegating, who can go out and recruit more guards in attendance or put out those fires for you, it allows more time for you to have those quiet moments in camp where you can reconnect with your friends um, and, and do that kind of thing. Yes, exactly. Um, I'm going to, just a second, um, I'm, I'm going to correct something I see in the chat. Uh, Excellency uh, Karen, Royal Advisor is important and it is not necessary, the Grail Bearer may or may not have any, at least in the summits, may not have any experience whatsoever. Uh, I've seen children be the Grail Bearer. So it's possible that the Grail Bearer could be that Royal Advisor, but sometimes not. So it's it's always best to have several uh, advisors in the background who in fact may have different viewpoints than you. So you're not in an echo chamber um, while that's going on. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to correct that. And then somebody had a question. I'm so sorry, I can't tell. This is Meryl. Um, while you are at an event during your reign, is it permissible to go incognito if the thing you want to do to relax is something that isn't in the privacy of your encampment? Um, it's permissible whether or not the um, your populace allows that to happen. <laughs> you can try to be stealth all you want, but people will recognize you and so if you're trying to, to totally remove the office from yourself, right? Uh, probably won't happen. People will recognize you and act accordingly. Even if you tell them, shh, I'm not really here, right? You, people still know you're there. So, so I'm, you know, I don't know, maybe. So it's not maybe really not. feasible to slap on a fake mustache and go work Harold's point. You can certainly try. Um, as long as people know where you are. Lisette, why are you laughing? Because we can <laughs> see the idea of anyone being anonymous while at Harold's point is absolutely hilarious. Especially, 
the Heralds will absolutely know who you are. If any group will know who you are, it is the Heralds. Especially because yeah. she is a Herald, so they're exactly. going to recognize her. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're actually, and just like we have another uh, question there in the chat. Um, I, I will side answer that previous question. The answer is no, you can't get away with it. Just, <laughs> you, you can be in a different country and you still don't get away with it. Um, so the uh, this other question here, um, it, it's a highly hypothetical, but uh, what would happen in a situation where as an incoming crown or coronet, you find yourself struggling to fill positions in the court, especially key roles? Is mm. it really possible to reign without certain positions filled? If so, which should be prioritized? Excellent question. Uh, in my experience, um, you need a head of retinue to help exactly with that. Uh, first, let me let me step back. If you are having problems filling roles, it is not of unheard of to hit Facebook or other social media or stand up in court and say, "We need help." Who wants to who wants to do a thing? Come come talk to my head of retinue or my court coordinator or something after after this um, to solicit ge in general from the populace. Um, if nothing else, you can add, you can get recommendations from people. Uh, I've often been tapped to say, you know, hey, who do you think would be a good head of retinue? And I know some people, so I'll suggest them. Uh, so. I would say if you can't, if you're having trouble filling roles, go to previous um, previous coronets or crowns, uh, maybe not the immediate predecessor to you because they're gonna all be tired, but, um, and, and, but at, reach out and ask those questions. Um, ask peers, especially, in, you know, you're going to be in a peer council, probably very first thing. <laughs> After you win, uh, there will be a peerage meeting that you'll have to go to. And um, whether you win and step up or you've had the three months before you step up, um, you'll be in a peerage meeting and it's totally okay um, to, and you're in your, because uh, you're asked if you have words to say, look, we're having problems filling this. If any of you have suggestions, please let us know. And uh, because Everybody knows everybody, just maybe, you know, six degrees of separation, whatever. Um, key roles. The part about being, one of the parts about being a crown or a coronet is that you no longer have any time of your own. Um, you really don't. You're pretty much on at events all the time. So I would say that the, the roles you need to fill are those um, who are responsible for wrangling other people, right? Um, it is very difficult to be the prince or princess and be telling, you know, figuring out which, which ladies or lords are gonna attend you during court, who's gonna go with me to the peerage meetings. Oh, and meanwhile, you need to make sure that the tent gets set up and I will need, you know, one, the coronet or crown just does not have the time to do that. Um, a, a phrase you need to learn if you win and step up is walk with me because everyone only needs just a few minutes of your time. You will never get to court, for example, if you stop and talk to everybody who wants to talk to you. So they can talk to you if you have time walking wherever you're going. Anyway, <laughs> um, it is also important to be able to tell your attendants to form a flying wedge so you can get somewhere where you need to go without talking to anybody. But um, that's so principal or important roles are those roles that wrangle other people, that wrangle your infrastructure. Uh, you just will not have time to do it all yourself successfully. You may do it and immediately abdicate because what a horrible experience my first three events have been, right? So 
uh, that's what I would say to you. Uh, uh, does that kind of answer the question? I can feel other thoughts prodding the back of my brain, but they're not coming out eloquently. I see who asked, who asked that question. Antonia, Antonio, so sorry. Uh, does that answer your question mostly? Does it help? Okay, great, thank you. Uh, yeah, exactly. You need a you need a stage manager, if you will. <laughs> um, Tasina points out a very good important thing as well. Um, bodily needs are important. You need to make time to visit the biffies, uh, eat, sleep, drink something other than alcohol. If you do that sort of thing. Um, get out of the sun, get out of the cold, that sort of thing, to uh, to keep to keep you alive and functioning, and not being that um, that coronet that people remember digging out of a ditch somewhere because they fell over from exhaustion. That's bad. Uh, yes, a kid wrangler as well. Not a bad idea if you have kids to have uh, someone to take care of them while you're doing your official things. Wow, really? Your Excellencies? Your Excellencies, that look was priceless. Yes, it was great. I mean, our child is a charming delight, but we- And she is. Uh, she, she is, but we are definitely appreciative when someone uh, is available to- uh, Distract move her elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, kids and pets, actually. Yes. Pets Especially as well. If somebody in your uh, populace is afraid of said pets, you want to be able to make sure if you are interacting with them, you can put the pet somewhere else. Yes. Yes. We have we have two large dogs, and um, we have um, people who are afraid of dogs um, that play uh, with us frequently. And so, yeah, it is handy to be able to hand off our. Exactly. Our um, our large hairy yes. beasts and very thoughtful of you. Well. If it was a small dog, she would still be. You would still need to hand off the dog. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's not the size nice. of the dog that matters. Yeah. Um, I see a question about budgeted. Uh, it is an excellent idea to set a budget pre rain um, That really entails digging into what you think it's going to cost you every event. Um, for food, because people forget food and gas, right? Food and gas, um, clothing. Uh, you can do it pretty simply. You do not need to have a brand new set of clothing, of garb for every event uh, if you don't want to. It's not required. And that will cut down on your costs a lot. Um, if you're a good budgeter, go for it. Uh, allow some flexibility. Uh, if so, what's a good number? That's hard. Um, like right now, gas is fairly inexpensive, at least in my area. But it has been as high as $4 a gallon and travel really dropped during all of that. I don't know. Uh, there's not a good number in general. There's probably a good number for you. So it, it's hard to answer that question. Biggest expense during my rains. Uh, I think it was gas, actually. Um, my princes and I, because I've rained twice with two different princes, um, we made a decision to not use the uh, travel funds for the principality because we, we didn't need to. Um, either way, I think gas and food, uh, uh, was, was the biggest expense, um, and largesse because at the time, uh, we were, we were just going out and buying stuff. Um, it's good to have a good largesse coordinator who can make that happen at a, at a, at a, uh, at a lower cost. It's 
it's not a really good answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Karen is um, giving uh, TJ some excellent uh, questions around that to think about to set your um, to set your budget. Thank you, Your Grace. That is um, that is excellent information there. Uh, Her Grace says they spent about six thousand dollars for summer summits rain in 2018. So that is their experience. You can go less than that, but often it it's it can be high. So you need to be able to uh, figure out what you're going to go to. Now, technically. Technically, you're only required to go to three events. And if you've won, you've gone to one of them. So technically, (laughs) at least within the principality, um, if you wanted to do that, you could. Again, your legacy might not be what you want it to be. I hope I've given you all a fairly broad overview of the practical aspect of what things you need to think about if you're going to enter a tournament uh, and win things you, you you need to at least read everything once, even if you're just skimming it. There won't be a quiz. Hi, Paulina. Um, and yeah. Hi, Oswald. Pardon me. <laughs> He's learned now to reach out and put his his paw on me to get my attention. So it's probably reinforcing the wrong behavior there. Uh, Rufus has another question in the chat now. Rufus. A list of names. That's that's the best thing. Um, no. Um, not that I can think of. Uh, I assume, Rufus, you're talking about winning and, and uh, stepping up. Um, because gen- if you're winning and stepping up that first, the same day or the same weekend, you're allowed, I mean, people will give you some time to, to get rolling on other things. Um, if like, uh, you know, you should not, I, I think it would be presumptuous to show up with all of your guard and attendant baldricks ready to go. I mean, that seems a little presumptuous, uh, but yeah, not really. I can't think. I can't think of anything else, Rufus. I'm, I'm, I'm reaching back in my head, and I just can't think of anything. Yeah, no, that's that's reasonable. I was, I, I see it being a very fine line you're walking, but, but between presumptuous and wanting to be prepared, right? Yes, um, exactly. And so, yeah, I was just was wondering. Besides a nice change of clothes. <laughs> And much more than that, yeah, you start bordering that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, um, I like somebody's uh, suggestion of um, um, having a shower accessible. Uh, uh, for for us, we were offered uh, a shower at a house nearby the event site. I'm sure you could find um, find a shower, somebody willing to lend you a shower. So no power washers. Um, da, 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 da. You could possibly uh, use your uh, new uh, new weight to uh, cut in line in the shower to the shower t- truck as well. You can if I I once so I was at um, Onshore West War after we won, and the court was coming and I had fought that day, so I went and got in line for the shower. It was taking a while. I was a little worried, but I didn't feel. Um, empowered enough <laughs> to go cut in line. So it, I think it would depend on on uh, one's personality. But I just meant if you were getting uh, if you were stepping up right away and you needed to shower beforehand. Yes, yes, I would I'm sure. My weight for that. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, let's see. Just want to say they can't start court without you. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's it's possible, but yeah, there are other things that the oh. previous that the current uh, cornets can do, you know, that uh, that don't require you. So, 
but yeah, it's kind of hard to stall forever. And let's see, la, 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 I'm running down the uh, banners. Nice, of course, Sobella. Uh, where do people get their coronets? Um, there's a lot of artists out there who are happy to make them for you as fancy as you'd like them to make. And I've also seen people make them out of leather. So, and uh, oh, uh, Vesta's coronet is Shrinky Dinks on wire, I think. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Oh no, hers is Shrinky Dinks. She yeah, very and on wire, you're correct. Yeah, so it can be, again, as expensive or non-expensive as you want it. I had too much to drink once and made one out of tin foil, and I don't have a title, and I got in trouble. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's that's unfortunate. I'm sorry. Play trouble. Playful trouble. <laughs> right. Well, Good. 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 Uh, Tasina, you said you had one more question. Did you ask it? No, I just. I, school has really beaten me into not speaking unless I've been told to. <laughs> Speak, uh, Tasina. <laughs> I talk a lot, but here's a good one. Um, how does the transition of, so there's tons of background stuff that happens that the plebes don't know about. Not an insult, I call myself a plebe. Anyway, but um, how does that transition work between the current rulers, whatever station they are, and the soon-to-be's? Like if it's a next day step up, how do you download that information in a good situation. I'm not including if the current ones are being asshats. <laughs> um, winning and stepping up the same day, uh, I think buys you a little leeway. Uh, the ceremonial transfer happens in court just fine. Um, you're supposed to, if the crown is not there, you're supposed to send your fealty to them in writing. And uh, when we, is that true? I'm sorry, that is true. I was questioning my memory. Um, I don't know if everyone does that or not. It's a neat little ceremonial thing. Uh, my second reign, we signed it in court and, and sent it off. So um, behind the scenes transitioning, such as the trailer um, and all the things in the trailer you need to carve out some time to do an inventory with the pre uh, with your predecessors, or their, or the chamberlain, or the exchequer, whoever is responsible for doing that, um, and that can take an hour. That can take three hours. Depends on uh, how good the bookkeeping has been up until that point. Um, other than that, you get a little you get a little leeway for maybe downloading current topics of discussion or complaint or things like that. Ideally, the officers will be able to hand most of that off to you. Uh, so you would need to reach out to your officers and uh, have a conversation with them about, hey, what's cooking and, you know, what, what's the happy spots in the principality or the kingdom? What are our trouble spots? You know, that sort of thing. I, you know, just woke up with a cornet on my head and went and had coffee. It was great. There wasn't a lot of transitioning going on. So, we can, we can talk about that more later. Thank you. Oh, thumbs up. Look at you using Zoom. Way more, be way more better than I do. <laughs> yeah. So, well. You are all now, if there's no more questions, you are now all set to get the basics to be able to reign in a fashion um, that will not embarrass you. <laughs> that, will make, that will make your legacy at least, at the very least, uh, hard to remember. <laughs> there's a couple of ways to be remembered because you've done great good or great evil, right? So, uh, at the maybe you know shooting in between is not a bad goal um, I'm happy to answer more questions um, as people think of them um, I'm on Facebook uh, does my real name show on this thing no it doesn't 
Um, but I'm on the, I posted on the, I'm a citizen of Terra Primaria and I'm on the barony of Terra Primaria's list so I can be found there. Um, and other people can funnel questions to me as well. We are going to, I'm not certain what we're doing with the PowerPoint, Your Excellency. Are we, uh, are we printing this out or posting the electronic somewhere? How does this work? I can attach a, um, like a Google file to, or a Google share uh, to the- uh, The YouTube uh, link? Yeah, the YouTube okay. link, thank okay. you. All right, I will um, make the additions that I've noted and then I'll send it to you. All right, excellent, thank you. Okay, I, I believe we're done, Your Excellency. Uh, hopefully well, you this so was useful for, for people. I, I, it was very useful. And uh, yeah, there's a lot that goes into running a rain and getting blindsided with, oh, I just won, what did I do? You know, <laughs> this at least gives somebody a starting which is a possibility in the next six to nine months, right? Depending on how the pandemic goes. So yes, we shall thank you. see. All right, everybody, thank you for your excellent questions. Um, and uh, like I said, I am chock full of trivia. Ask away anytime you want.